We're back on the Mana Symbol channel playing a little bit from the 5-0 dump. Uh, this is a blue-white Urza Blade deck, uh, 60 cards with three Urzas, so very much uh, in the mold that I've been playing recently, um, including some main deck to Fairy Time Rappler. So basically, this person has figured out the, the proof of concept, done the numbers uh, in, a, in such a way that, uh, that they got a 5-0, and it looks pretty, pretty tight uh, overall. Uh, just definitely doesn't seem like these decks can really um, manage trying to play black very well, uh, which I'll get to talk about a little bit on this week of um, Faithless Brewing. Um, but the, the white cards in these archetypes are just so, so good. Um, though worthy of note that we have 21, uh, 22, 23 artifacts for Ingenious Smith, so our hit rate on that's going to be a little shy. Um, Hopefully, between everything else in the deck, it's not going to be problematic. Um, this deck has a really good white count if you wanted to play Solitude in it somewhere. Uh, obviously, we're electing to play Metallic Rebuke and no Solitude in the sideboard. Uh, but you definitely could um, with with not many problems at all. Uh, so, um, this is a sort of aggressive-ish, mid-range-ish artifact deck, which can have some draws that are fairly aggressive, some draws that are um, fairly disruptive, and we have enough uh, card advantage and mana sources to be able to get to Urza Lord High Artificer, usually with a pretty good artifact count in play when we get to that point, uh, as well as fairly likely being able to put together the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek combo. So we have only one Sword of the Meek, but it's tutorable with Stoneforge Mystic. We have three Thopter Foundries, but they can be found with Ingenious Smith, uh, or just card draw off of Esper Sentinel. Um, we've got the four Metallic Rebukes and Teferi here as uh, different ways um, to interact with certain certain things our opponent could be doing. And we've got Aether Spellbomb, Chromatic Star, Pithy Needle, Relic uh, as our go-to. Um, there's the Saga targets in there. Is of course, Shadow Spear in here as well. I think Relic is something that throws people because they're like, but aren't you a graveyard combo? What if your Sword of the Meek is in the graveyard and you must sacrifice the Relic of Progenitus to exile your opponent's graveyard? And it's like, yeah, that does come up from time to time. Um, it also is possible sometimes on the turn where you tutor for it, you don't have the extra mana to go crack the Relic or you don't want to spend your mana that way, in which case um, Soul Guide Lantern would be better. And in case in 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 that fact, we actually do have... A Soul Guide Lantern in the sideboard here. So, so three Damping Spheres and an Ashiok, uh, which we were talking about, or we mentioned in the in the chat here, which could be with respect to Titan. Um, I think there's probably a fairly specific sideboard plan we're supposed to have for Titan, because we've got two Dispatch and a Condemn, um, as well as uh, lots of other stuff. So that's why my Thopter Sword decks play Karn the Great Creator. Yeah, I guess so. It's just like so. Um, what do I want to say about it? That's really slow. You're saying yesterday how we're underperformed over the course of the challenge. It didn't. It just seems like such a perfect fit. What issues did you have? Um, well, a lot of the time in the early game, like when you have this word in your hand, it's just kind of sitting there being like difficult to cast. Um, and there's a lot of decks, which especially post board, you're going to get um, force of vigor a bunch. Uh, and then your artifact count is so low. You're really only realistically worrying for like one or two, which is hard. Um, so it's just like, it's, it's when things are going well, it's fine. But when things are going badly, it's it's really really not helpful. Um, it's it's just a tricky card to try to play. It's it it asks a lot of you and uh, it gives you a lot less. And that's why Ingenious Smith and Stoneforge Mystic are are my preference for ways to try to help you put together your combo um, or find disruptive pieces. Um, like compare War of Invention to Urza's Saga, and I think maybe. It's like Urza's Saga will tutor you up useful toolbox cards, but also has a great mode where it just does stuff you want. And Wur doesn't really do that very well. Like the 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 value lines with Wur uh, versus like 
uh, the toolbox or combo lines with were. Uh, just they're just not almost non existent. Huh? So we're against the Luris deck with a kind of speculative hand here. But I think I kinda like it. Um if it's hammer time particularly, obviously this hand is gonna suck. Uh, but if it's any Luris black deck, this hand is pretty solid. So Luris Black has been super popular recently, so I'm just going to hedge that that's what we're up against um, and go down this road. Oh, it could be Burn as well. Yeah, looks like Burn. Okay. It's a fine hand against Burn. Uh, we do have also a lot more lands and mana sources than uh, some of the other decks that I've been playing recently. Saga off the top doesn't, doesn't bother me. Ah, uh, we're very much not dead. Hi, <laughs> Larynx. Said we were going to play good decks, then here we are again. Oh, yeah. So the real question is, do I have a Springleaf Drum or any kind of mana source in here? Oh, we got a Promatic Star. Promatic's good decks and we're playing in the dumpster. Oh my god! Okay, well it, it, it honestly basically doesn't matter what deck we're playing. The only thing that could beat this is like 4-color Ephemerate, right? So, let's be real. Where are the other card? It's Urza on top. Yeah, like sometimes they just have it. Like this is this is generally speaking gonna be an okay matchup. And sometimes you're just gonna get flattened. Like there's really not I, I don't really think that that's anything we can do anything about. That's why you play burn TBH, sometimes you just obliterate people. Well that's why you play decks in modern that have a powerful linear game plan. Titan is another good example. It's just like, if you have a powerful linear game plan, it's like, sometimes both decks just kind of fiddle around, but your deck's going to fiddle around and then win. Going upstairs. Bold. It's a bold move, Cotton. See if it works out for him. Yeah, interesting. All right. I mean, we in this. In it to win it, no holding back.
Should have respected the construct opponent. Good goddamn. Ain't nobody knows the power of Urza anymore. If we untap, the game is over. Like, eight different ways. So... Oh boy, Larynx, they're dead. Maybe. If they didn't hit a land, they literally can't kill us with spells. If they hit a land and they have... Tri no, it's just land triple bolt. That's their win. It's main deck. There are no smash the smithereens here. Yeah, they're, they're, they're dead. And even if I didn't, like, all I need to do is attack with my Construct, Metallic Rebuke, the possible Skullcrack, and it's it's over anyway. Like, <laughs> they, they have no play here. If if they didn't have land, bolt, 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 that's, that was the only out that they possibly could have had. So we just go Sentinel. I guess the second card should be Thopter Foundry rather than the second Sentinel. Because this gives me instant speed life gain as well. And then Rebuke comes off like any of these or any of that, whatever. Um, I mean... They just attack with this. And then they play Skullcrack and I counter it and the game's over. Do it. First, give me a card. Uh, Vanalik? Oh, boy. Pog. Yes, we make extremely excellent play. <laughs> they gave us all the lands that they needed. Alright, so... Even though they're a Lurus deck, I don't feel like I need any Graveyard Hate. I think I'm okay with c keeping one Pithing Needle, but I probably don't need Aether Spell Bomb. Um, I know some people are going to tell me to put in EE, especially after that game, but I really don't agree with it, usually, against Burn. It's just, like, it's really, re it's a really slow way to usually kill, like, one creature. Maybe two. But we also have other stuff to get in the way of that. We have portable holes. We have our creatures. It was actually a very unusual draw that we, we didn't have any way to deal with that so far. And I think, like, one Teferi out's fine. I don't want to draw two, but one is totally fine. How you doing today, King? I saw that you were on most of the night again. I think you were. I know you were the day before. <laughs> Idra is a grinder. He's a, he is a real grinder. He's a grinder's grinder. I used to see the name Team Leader NA from time to time and be terrified. Turn to Smith. Turn three, activate Saga. Seems okay. Did they take a mull? They did not. They get their seven. So this is like a Searing Blaze Crushes Me kind of hand. But honestly... I think, I think it's fine. Metallic Rebuke on top. Okay.
spike. Okay. Rift bolt. Okay. So we're at 10. Calls are complete on top. Womp womp. It's not what I was looking for. Yeah. I still haven't found what I was looking for. Maybe I was just supposed to play the Talisman this turn because the Smith is unlikely to ever, like, do anything. Talisman means we could play Urza next turn. Although, Talisman opens me up to getting uh, smashed on the... Smashed on the Talisman. So we're at 10, four cards on their side. No steering blades, please. It worked. Gosh, so many cards in hand. How can I lose? I have more cards than my opponent. It's not possible to lose. Uh-oh. That's a good draw, actually. So now we go... Saga... Talisman, Sentinel, Portable Hall. Yeah, I know, King, but it's like... At the same time, I'm taking the Goblin Guide off the table, so it's, it's probably, probably plus, right? I'm probably up on, on life total from this. Bolt me. Sure. If they have triple bolt, they have triple bolt. I mean... Like, I don't think we were going to make it through anyway. I still had a fetch land I was probably going to need to play. Yeah. So, it's pretty hard to say it's like, I don't know. Like, they had the Goblin Guide start. They had enough bolts. If they had a Boros Charm anywhere here, I, I'm dead any anyway at four. Which is, you know, basically just as likely as anything else. Uh, not dead yet. Probably dead now, but we weren't dead yet. Smash, yeah. Yeah, if we had uh, Force of Negation, we would have been okay there, but that's fine. Burn on the play, gonna kill ya sometimes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they really realistically they threw game one by not killing my my construct, I think. I think if they killed the construct, I was gonna be dead to burn out of the hand. Losing to burn feels at least bad to me. Yeah. And again, like, we beat a hand where they went Goblin Guide, turn two, Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide, right? <laughs> yes. I don't know if I've ever done that before. And I've played against burn for many years now. I don't know if I've ever beat that hand before.
How's it feeling in the meta? Feels pretty good. So this is turn two Talisman, turn three Thopter Foundry with Metallic Rebuke up. Turn four Stoneforge for the sword. Kind of slow. I don't know if I have a much better hand than this. Yeah. Oh, well. If only asks the king and he receives. This world is generous to its nobility. The modern nobility. I did, Tony. I did. I actually, I have it downloaded. <laughs> yeah! Yay, magic! Rift Bolt to exile again? Man. Teferi off the top? Nope. That's no, okay. This, uh, this hand feels a little... Little good now, actually. Am I supposed to play either of these? No, we just make a construct here with Rebuke up, right? Yeah, this is like really, really good. Is this coming in as 4 4? Hell yeah. Captain Thickums right there on the battlefield. This dude's been hitting the gym. Oh, yeah. Bolt upstairs? Okay. Oh, they're going to two for one themselves for this? That's a tonka tuck of a truck of a construct. I feel like what they're going to do is go land Searing Blaze, and then I'm going to rebuke it, and then they're going to have to play a third spell just to try to kill it, and that's that's going to be the... This is going to be the game right here. Uh, oh, please tell me it's Swift Spear into Searing Blaze. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. Oh, opponent... All right, you can get your buff, but uh, the blowout. Get got, nerd. Whew! All too easy. Do I have... I know I have more of the Quake stuff. Eh, this is good enough. Game over. The user. Uh, I have the island here, so we can just go make the next construct, get the Shadow Spear, play the island, equip swing, and then I think that's over. All right, opponent, it's turn four, and I'm at 19. Go. <laughs> Winner.
Uh, there was a Saga Mono Red mid range for a while, King Ghidra. I actually really enjoyed it. It played uh, Koth of the Hammer. The thing is, Saga plus um, a lot of the spells in Burn is really bad. Like, Spreading Seas is already pretty good against Burn main deck out of um, Four Color Ephemerate and Blue Eye Control. So, uh... yeah, yeah. We can add this one to the soundboard. Uh, definitely have to turn it down. Let's see. Humiliation. There we go. Hi, Robert. Finest mod in the Twitch universe, Roybert Kipitzblot. Dwight Schrute. Dwight K. Schrute, sorry. My, my apologies, Dwight. Yeah, I, this might have been your list, Pirlo, or... No, because this is from the Friday dump. But it, yeah, this, 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 these lists are... They have felt very, very good. I This is... It's really annoying if there, this isn't a portable hole matchup. I feel like there's enough portable hole matchups we're probably going to be fine. It'll be burn again, right? But this time, Lurisless burn. It's a crappy hand in the dark, for sure. Is it oops? Uh oh. Have the talisman to add four Urza? Well, your artifact count is already really, really low for Ingenious Smith, so I'm not super excited about saying that. Well, we do have portable holes to slow him down, Blitz, because they're going to play a two mana artifact here in theory. Um, and we have. Uh, four metallic rebukes in the main deck, so it's like possible. Yeah, so like we're gonna knock them off having the the thing for next turn, and um, and I got double Esper Sentinel, so their next mana rock is gonna draw me two cards, maybe one at at worst. Oops in Modern is, is distinctly worse than uh, Belcher. We have Bounce. Does the Bounce matter? What are, we, what are we supposed to Bounce? When they combo. Oh! That's pretty good, huh? Pretty good! I miss Oops being good in Modern was free wins for the mill player, yeah. That's the 2-3 if they play it on curve. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one with the activated ability, yeah. Oh! They're on some kind of split build. Okay, well, let's see if I can hit... Um... Rebuke or Teferi. Uh, okay, so we got to try to do one extra point of damage next turn. Oops has Belcher back up. It didn't used to. Oh, this is resolving. I can't stop it. Oh, we can also draw several of our pieces of equipment. So, yeah, we just sack this now and just try to get the kill. Damn. 
Can't do it, huh? Gosh, what a crappy way to lose. Damn you! One time per turn! You can? Four, five, six. Like, I don't know what you... I don't know what you want from me here. Trigger it, put them to one. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at their deck. Because I don't know exactly what, what this looks like. No, no. We were one short. Literally one short. Yeah, it's just oops. Playing one, two, three. So probably all four belchers. Yeah. We also could have found the pithing needle. Where was our answer? Oh, it was it was a while. Actually, Stoneforge into no, we couldn't equip the Shadow Spear. Okay, we we didn't have any answers in the top chunk. Yeah, so we were the yeah they they play a ton of uh of artifact ramp on two, so that they can combo on three. So I think we board into something like this. So we'll keep the Cauldra. Probably keep the Urzas. Technically on their combo turns, they sometimes have to... I guess we can... We could play Ash. No, Ashiak doesn't work against their combo turn. On their combo turn, something that they do have to play multiple spells because they have to play the Salvage Titan, right? Yeah, I know we're on a 61 card deck. Yeah, they still have to pay for it if they... Okay, it's probably good. Salvage Titan being only win con is sussy. It's not their only win con. What? They, they Salvage Titan into the... Unless you're worried about it getting pithy needled. Is that what you're... I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Salvage Titan isn't even the win con, right? It, it's triggering the Venge Vines as the win con. Yeah, but I mean... That's how they do it, right? I mean, is there a is there a better plan B? Or are you just saying, like, this is why Oops is bad? Because there's so many main deck pithing needles floating around. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, so I'm almost definitely not, uh, activating Saga on three because they're going to play something I'm going to have to hold. 
And I don't want to get blown out playing Urza Saga here and have them force a vigor me, because I'm 100% sure that they could be playing force a vigor. So we just play Smith here off the land, and then backup relic is nice. Yeah, backup relic is nice. Nice. Very nice. Uh, this one is this playlist from YouTube. I think I just put out the Damping Sphere here, right? There's like no way they're going to combo this turn. And I can't deal with anything else. Like, they could play the other oops, oops guy. Is it Undercity Informant? It's Undercity Informant. And then the other one is Vampire something. Nighthawk something. And this is going to go off next turn to get me a Pithing Needle for Belcher. So it looks like we're in good shape. Oh, Balustrade Spy. There we go. Balustrade Spy. I'll just play the second Relic here. I don't think there's any reason not to. It's like Force of Vigor into like untap combo would be the problem here, but... Okay. So five, oh, we just kill him this turn. Five, six, seven, eight, or ah, five and eight. Yeah, just kill him. Theoretically, uh, actually, I guess if they do have force of vigor, we'll fail. And then die. Huh. Well. I can't do more damage than... Well, I can do one more, but it doesn't uh, insulate me from the Force of Vigor. So, let's not get forced. I don't know. Kill ya? Cool. Uh, I will warn you, uh, Smirabito. Um, that this playlist, this playlist sucks. The one I'm working off right now on, on YouTube, because all the songs are at different volumes. So that's really annoying. Yeah, we always die to bigger. Exactly. Like it's just, we're, that's, that's where, what we're in the business of doing in this matchup right now. Okay. This is going to be the hardest game. Um, we need to find a counter on time. I think that's what this this game comes down to. Double Pithing Needle, though. Double Pithing Needle with double Esper Sentinel? Stoneforge for Cauldra? Alright. If my hand wasn't going to have a counter, this would be, like, about the best hand you could possibly have. So we Needle Salvage Titan, and we Needle um, uh, Charbelcher. And we should get an extra draw on turn two, plus they took a mulligan. Pantad Prism with one counter? No, nah, it'll be. Oh my god, it's a Pantad Prism with one counter! Which is more important? 
Why, are you saying I should double needle Roy? The thing is, I, I can't beat them... Needle Salvage and Esper? Right, 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 because we can play the um we can play the, the pitting needle after they play the belcher if they play the belcher. Right. Yeah. And that means if they play the belcher, I draw two cards. Good uh good catch, King. That is nice. Well, the, the thing about Needling Salvage Titan is, like, they do, like, some versions of Oops, and I didn't look at this deck very carefully, because I don't, I don't know it that well, and I probably would have missed it. And it could have been hiding in their hand. Um, th there are versions of Oops where, even if they can't, like, kill you on the go-off turn, they can still win by, like, shuffling more cards in. Usually they have a Nexus of Fate, like... It's not like they immediately lose if they don't win exactly the turn that they try to go off. So there's there's definitely a potential that uh, this doesn't work out for us. Wow, one Pentad Prism washes the other here. What are they doing? Are they going to play something for three? For what? Okay, so they're going to play some kind of disruption on my turn, some kind of hate uh, on my needle. So I think we have to play the second needle on Salvage Titan here. Which feels really bad and is going to look really stupid when I'm wrong. But I think it's correct. Because, like, this is not Force of Vigor. If it's Force of Vigor, it means they're going to, like, hard cast it. Because they should have paid for one of the Esper Sentinels. Gut Insight? It's just, like... Why would they not pay for it if their only plan right now is to play Belcher next turn, right? They would have just paid for it. So I'm pretty sure this means that they're going to kill the Needle this turn and then untap and try to combo me. Which means a second Needle on the other card stops me from losing to that. And I, I just, I can't imagine any other way that this would be going right now. And if they play the Belcher, I have I have a little bit more time to find uh, an answer for that. Although, realistically, at that point, what am I trying to do? Find my one Teferi, bounce my needle, and reset it, I guess? It's just like, I, I, I'm reading into this, this meaning. This means something, right? This doesn't not mean anything. I, I don't believe that they just did that and they didn't pay for my Esper Sentinel just because. Okay. I'm sticking with my line, but it could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to be doing something here, right? Lamau. A. Ooh, it's the Luigi's Mansion theme. Thought you'd been playing Scales last week. I can't play Scales well, Sari. I honestly didn't know what I was going to start playing. 
But we we beat Burn and we're looking in good shape here against uh oops. This is a sick arrangement of uh, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> I do I do enjoy the running gag I have on this channel time to time of uh of giving people a uh, a political answer. Okay, that's that's going to lock up the game, I think, especially with the damping sphere. Do I need to play the sphere here anymore? As long as this is on... Can, can I set up for lethal next turn? What? He won the back-to-back -back challenges? Good god. I knew he top-aided back-to-back challenges. I didn't think he won top back-to-back uh, uh, -back challenges. Oh, even with Damping Sphere, they can play the Balustrade Spy, and then they could do the Salvage Titan thing if they crack through this. It's a rich man, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six plus four. Yeah, they're, they're dead next turn anyway. I don't need to spend any mana at sorcery speed to do it. So hopefully the one metallic rebuke plus the a needle on salvage titan gets me there. And they can't go play belcher kill you. Even if they could, I have the rebuke. So they, they need a lot of stuff here. Paying costs. Another natural state, okay. Not paying the tax man. They can't go off this turn. They could put themselves in a spot where they resolve the Undercity Informant. So if they go land Undercity Informant, they could pay for the rebuke. And then, where does that put me? I think we just pass here. But now I can't make the construct and cast the rebuke, which is kind of crappy. So let's see if they have another mana source. On tap lands specifically. Play a lot of tap lands, so maybe they don't. This looks like informant. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just. Not even interested in seeing it. No, 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 no. You got me. You got me. <laughs> I've been there, opponent. I'll be right back.
Lego! Lego my ego blitz. So sorry, was Soul Throng on black red both days? That's crazy. You like the list? Yeah, this is from the 50 dump. I think there's a I think there's a few things you could tweak and tune about it, but like these lists in general are just like I, I like them a lot. Uh, yeah, let's go. Uh-oh. They're on the thing! Alright, friends, it's time to lose to Colgan's command. Takes the Thopter Foundry, huh? All right. Works for me. Don't you know you gotta dash the monk? Well, I guess they're taking this. I'm literally guessing. I have no idea what they'll take. Yeah, I guess they're taking that. This is not a good draw if they're on the deck I think they're on. I'm supposed to play the Saga here, right? Next turn I have Saga Activation or Metallic Rebuke or Hole Rebuke. Yeah. And then on the turn four we just play Urza. It feels kind of bad, but I mean, we, we did get double Inquisition into this spot, so it's like, it's not bad. Hand started fine. <laughs> we got double Inquisition. <laughs> Any hand is, is fine when you lose your best two situational cards. I do wonder what their hand is that they took the Stoneforge. Like, are they worried about it being a two-for-one? I'm not sure. Luris to hand. Good lord. If this is the black-red deck, this is like their worst kind of draw. At least I think it is. Like, the scary draws from this deck are the the aggressive ones. At least I think so. Uh, does it matter to make my construct? No. Let's just get this in play. I don't think my construct being a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two matters right now. And there's a good chance they tap down. Right, we just let this go. They're almost definitely taking Urza, and I'd rather have the activation uh, if they take my rebuke. Let's see what they take here again. It's kind of... Yeah, they take the rebuke. If they go land Luris, that's like a pretty good punish. Yeah. But I think we can overcome this. Because we get Graveyard Hate plus two Constructs and an Urza.
smart. I mean, if I do the thing and then they have a KCOM four and no, we're good. It's going to be hard for them to fill their graveyard with things as is. It's probably fine. I'm not convinced this is the right play, but mm. like if I pass the turn, they just get to play the, the bobble and it's like, yeah, sure. I can threaten the activation and I can defuse them playing on Holy Heat if they try to kill Urza, but it's like, eh. They have Turok right here. It'll be kind of a tilt, but not really. There's nothing I could have done about it with the hand I had at the moment. Darksteel Citadel doing doing the Lord's work here, making sure my constructs are just big enough that they're relevant. Why not tapping relic for mana? Oh, you're right. I I forget I forget frequently that relic is not tap sack. I don't play a lot of relic compared to the other yup uh, um graveyard hate that I've played. Of course, it takes both spells. <laughs> couldn't couldn't not take both spells there for sure. Okay, well we can start spinning Urza. Yeah, this is a free attack for them. Although that means I get to crack them for 10 here? Pog? Would I rather do that or would I rather spin Urza once and attack them for whatever's left over there? Oh, also, if I kill the Turok, then they can just replay it. But them replaying it with Kicker is way less scary than it was now. Is there a good Needle name against these decks? Bro, oh, Soul Strong wasn't on black red. Huh. Yeah, but Bubbles is probably the name. Yeah, I think black red only plays the uh, bubble. Or the land. Oh, Den of the Bugbear. I think the game's a bit far gone for that to help them now. So it's like, do I use Urza to spin into a card, which could end up being a land? Or do we just put him to one? Or they block, and that works out well for me, too. Let's put him in the ground. Flavor with Urza on the board. I'm not sure I understand the ice gate. But I do like flavor. Oh, Mishra's Bobble. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, we're, we're definitely winning the flavor battle here. Nurse <laughs> and Mishra are not BFFs. What? I've never seen anything in a set that's told me that. They're on Saga. Okay, I've seen this deck recently. Ish. Did not impress me then. Wow. I can't hate that. 
Like Urza's bubble better. It's pretty good. Main deck Doom Blade. Uh, it's probably no one but you, Roy. The audio desyncs tend to be pretty uh pretty localized. Alright, let's draw Aether Spellbomb get out of here. Anyone? That works too. And literally kill them, but uh I think I think this is gonna close the game out nicely. Do I bother attacking with the second one? Yeah, it forces the chump. Yeah. Usually you just refresh and it, it comes comes together. Let me know if it doesn't. Oh, they do have a 1-1 one, one and the that they're dead if they do that. Okay. Luris has to hang back now. They, they need to find more removal. Otherwise, this is just over. That could be really good. Nope. They could play Turag. No, they're dead on board. They need something better than that. They have Turok and a 1-1. One -one. Not good enough. This is an E matchup, I think. And Dispatch. And probably Condemn as well. Relic and Soul Guide, maybe. Uh, not Soul Guide, but maybe the second Relic. Yeah. <laughs> you think so, Chris J? I've been tooling around with a lot of decks like these recently. They're they're pretty they're pretty fun. Um I have a good time playing them. Yes, 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 yes. Yes to all these, yes to all these, yes to all these, yes to all these, yeah. Let me just cut one of the Teferis here again. Yeah, there's a main deck Feather Needle. And then... So there, there's a sideboard one, but their deck didn't really show us much that we want. Maybe I'm supposed to bring in the second one. Maybe. Like, it's possible that... Um, that we want... The second needle um for their ee which is weird because i'm bringing in the ee but it's definitely more dangerous uh if they get an ee where they want it maybe this isn't an ee matchup i think it is but maybe it's not second needle is probably better I'm also torn about the Cauldra in this matchup. Like, Cauldra seems like it's it's just going to be bad. But it does make Stoneforge into a mandatory kill. You know what? Maybe we'll bring back the Teferi over having Cauldra. Because I think Cauldra is just going to get stuck in my hand. And, like, if I'm in a situation where I have Urza and I could top deck the Cauldra and play it, that, that I'm probably winning that game anyway. I don't think the Cauldra is necessary. That's about Miser's Verdict. I don't know really what that's supposed to be for. Maybe it's this matchup. Like, we let him play to the board and just try to eat him. Very much so, Roy. It's just, 
it's just it's it's just like a not particularly interesting or fun card and there's just a bunch of games where it's like it either wins immediate like it wins over the three turns or the matchup is such that Caldra isn't even that good it's just annoying for like i don't know it's just like a really pushed card that really messes up with or like messes up i don't know like a bunch of mid-range decks all right this is fine against black red I, it's just i don't know it's just like it, it just feels lazy i guess i guess maybe that's the problem i have with it it's just like a lazy design like it's a very flavorful design so that's cool but in terms of the, like how the card actually comes out it's just uh has anyone tried Luris in this deck main deck? I, I think I've seen people do it. It's uh it's fine. You you do want to play Bobble, right? Which this deck is not. Yeah, the thing is, like, Luris begets other things that are not actually that good for this archetype. They're just like things that people historically think you should be playing in this archetype. Uh okay. You do that. We do this, we do this, we do this. It's like, if you play... Calder was designed as if Stoneforge doesn't exist. I don't think that's true at all, uh, a game maker. Yeah, the thing is, Boosh, it's not even true, right? Because then there's a bunch of matchups because they put Prismatic Ending in, in the set as well. And we already had Archmage's Charm in the format. So it's like... It's actually, it, it, it also fails to do its job against most of the well-constructed decks in Modern. So it's like, what is this doing? It's not doing, it, like, it doesn't do anything except, like, like occasionally high roll. It's like, the, the best deck at playing it is the Grief Ephemerate deck, Grief or Madness, right? Because they clear your hand of, like, basically all your spells, and then they play only Stoneforge, and then they activate it, and then they kill you. But basically everything else, it's, like, pretty poor. It's, like, middling at best. So it's just, like, a really... I don't know. It's, like, it's a really tilting card, right? Okay. I needle their saga, I think? Seems like the play. If they have KCOM here, I'm getting annihilated, but like I just can't play around that. The other question is, am I equipping Shadow Spear? So if they flip their Channeler and they have a Bolt. Nine, 10, 11, 12. It's pretty unlikely. Attack for five. Play Stoneforge. Stoneforge gets me Nettle Cyst, which isn't a big deal. Gets me Sword of the Meek, which is definitely not very good right now. Yeah, playing the Stoneforge is like not particularly valuable. We'll suit up the Construct, swing in. If they have KCOM, I'm getting annihilated, but I don't think we're ever beating KCOM here. They could have... Like, Heat's not turned on yet. So... No. At least they kind of... Yeah, they had the... Oh. What? Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Oh, and they shocked me. Okay. So if they flipped the Chandler... Wait, this the Chandler's flipped. I'm dead. Okay, got it. Well played opponent. I wasn't uh, expecting that. Yeah, I should have seen it was on board, um, but the KCOM was going to beat us anyway there. Plus the double Dothy uh, opener with the uh, discard. Okay, we definitely on the and keep the verdict. There are death and taxes deck that's not terrible right now. Uh, I think.
think most of the Death and Taxes decks are not terrible, but I think they're very difficult to play well, uh, as they usually are at, at the sort of worst of times for that archetype. So I, I, I would say probably like there's a 60, I, I did not JK Torborg. There's probably both a 60 and an 80 card death and taxes with a whole bunch of like cool stuff in them that are totally playable in the format, whether or not you're willing to go through the pain and anguish of trying to play them in the format. Now that's a different question. That's a very different question. Texas has a lot of tools to be fine. Um, I don't know, Mr. Siri. It's like... Mm, it's pretty... I should play the tap land. That's fine. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, my alarm went off at uh, 6.45 a.m. JK Torborg, and I just went, nah. Nah. I'm not, uh, not into it. But you're playing scales, Mr. Siri. Like, it, I feel like it's a different proposition for scales. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just wrong. I don't know. But I feel like it's different for scales. Well, this this hand has not really been working out, has it? Uh, although we've been top deck Urza. Like, wh where is their onslaught of discard this game? Where where did that go? Can I have that back? The Inquisition Inquisition Thoughtseize draw. There we go. Yeah, you can have the portable hole. Wasn't doing anything. Three mana discard, lose two life. Deal. It does grow their Turok. I'd really like to draw any business here. That was the business I wanted, yeah. Yeah, I like that one just fine. So what uh, what kind of Urza do I want? Esper? No, Jeskai. Create a good top deck. Whoop. One short. So let's get terminated or doom bladed. Urza can only be Grixis? No, oh, he's the hero sometimes. Not the hero we need, Mr. Siri, but the hero we deserve. The only color Urza's really never uh, been much of is green. <laughs> Definitely some very... Very red, very black, and very white moments for Urza. All right, this is not too bad, honestly. We got a card out of it. It was another basic land, but we got a card out of it. All right. Um, I'm going to spin without playing a land because we could hit a Saga. Yeah, that's Percentile's all right. That's a pretty good draw! Pretty good drop. <clears throat> Go ahead. Would you would you like to play any non non creature spells, opponent? Any of them? Doom Blade. I will draw a card. You know what? They kill the Urza. Draw a card. Totally totally fine with this. Second kill spell would make me upsetty. Oh, come on. It's 
stop. <sighs> yeah, they had it in the main deck, Colonel. Uh, Colonel. That 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 name took me a half second. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe good. Yeah, the Inquisition was a little bit annoying. He shows that. Are you serious? Come on, man. I I said your count was low, but like, I wasn't trying to offend you. God damn. Imagine run, not running walk the plank. Isn't that a sorcery? Is it's bad, right? Yeah, it's a sorcery. Like, come on. If it was an instant, I would at least entertain the the goofiness of it. But I'd be like, yeah, well, it kills Murktai, right? Yeah, I know, Jake and Dorborg, I played that standard. It was like, why is this a sorcery? Why, why do you hate us? I think you should play more artifacts. I would love to. Uh, all right, so they can go Luris into Bobble here, and I'll draw a card. This game has been, uh, this game has been something. This Turok just holding down the fort against my entire board of white creatures. It could pick up the Shadow Spear would be pretty annoying, but. Uh, I don't remember Jace of the Face. It's part of a cycle from Strixhaven, and it does get played in Pioneer. Uh. Damn! Also a sorcery. Yeah. I like Damn as a card. A lot. A lot, a lot. Baleful Mastery, thank you. It was the Mastery Cycle. Luris, play the bobble. Do it! They didn't do it. Yeah, Baleful Mastery is a fine card. So I go down five, they go up five. Then I crack back four. Oh, we'll see. Can I draw any bit... Are you fucking kidding me? Is it turn eight and I haven't missed my land draw? Turn eight and I haven't missed my land draw. How do we kill Turok again? Uh, well, we tend to kill the player, and then Turok just falls over. Defeated. Definitely attack with both Smiths here. Would you like to trade your kitty cat? They actually might. I wouldn't I would not be upset if they did. Or surprised, to be honest. It's a very weird game. Yep, I'm like 100% sure it was correct for me to do that. But if someone in chat tells me I'm wrong, I'll, I will immediately believe you, by the way. No questions asked. I, I will believe that that was not a good attack. Okay, please, one time. Good draw. That is going to kill us, lol. Thanks, Mr. French. Very, very helpful input. There's, there's nothing I can do about it. No, it's not. Nope. Nah. Were they, now, now the question is, were they holding on to an abrade this whole time? They were not, okay. Ooh. Ooh. This this is like oh I I freaking love this card. Even when it fails, it's so good, man. Tarmogoyf that draws you a card. So good. Alright. Um so If I move the Nettlesist off the Esper Sentinel, there's a pretty good chance 
that um all right we're gonna need bobble here yeah they have three more in their deck yeah we're definitely naming bobble here they have three more in their deck right now so um actually no we're naming engineered explosives Just give them one of these. i i know it's not likely to happen have they used ee they haven't i'm gonna call ee because if they top deck an ee it's pretty disastrous for me right well they lose their shadow spear i lose my shadow spear and my sentinel and they get a rag of ammo. yeah i'm just naming engineered explosives if they want to redraw with a bobble it's fine I think I put the Nettle Cyst and the Shadow Spear on the same Smith and just started attacking with that. Um, if they block with Turok, it means I can't move the Cyst back to Esper Sentinel. No, we just put everything on the Sentinel, right? So if they block with Turok, it takes five, and then a Bolt would kill it. I draw a card. But then I just move the stuff back onto a Smith. I don't know. what. Yeah, that's that's probably fine. Attack with all? This is bad against Coligan's command. Yeah. Okay. Don't they just gain more? Oh, maybe they do. Yeah, I didn't do any of that math. Yeah. Bad at combat math. We all know it. I did gain life there, though. Ooh, they can give their pro white creature uh, fear. That's pretty good. All right, so we got to put everything on a smith if, we, if we're hoping to do any damage. Because they gain five, so I have to trample for at least five plus. Well, that's not a good draw. So how much damage do I get to do here? One? I'm netting one damage right now? Crap. Two? Yeah, looks like two. Why do I need to bounce the net assist? Why would I need to or want to bounce the net assist? Pity we can't bounce the net assist. I don't understand. Okay. Oh, the token's black. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I was like, the creature will be smaller. Much smaller. But yeah, black obviously would be relevant here. Just draw an Urza. Or that. Uh, this grows the smith, which is relevant. So now we're getting through for three. This also means this is a 5-5... Five, five Six sticks with the shadow spear, so now I can move the nettle cyst afterwards. Four people saying four. Oh, because it yeah, the nettle cyst plus as well. So, but this is a five five six six with five damage marked on it because we're not playing arena. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we get if we could bounce the nettle cyst, the wrath looks better. I still don't know if I'd play it. All right, looks like we got this. We both flooded out pretty spectacularly there. Esper Sentinel is such a freaking house. I wish I could find them in paper. It's like everywhere is sold out. Also, personally, I really, really like the uh, sketch art for uh, Esper Sentinel. TCG? 
Uh, I'm Canadian, and I feel like the shipping and everything. I also have like store credit at a bunch of places, Mister Fringe. I don't, I don't really need them right now. So it's like one of those things where it's just like I want to have them to play decks like this, but I don't actually need. Like if I needed to, I'd just get them off eBay or TCG or something like that. But I just, I would prefer one of the local stores where I just have like a whack load of credit. Yeah, the, uh, the proportions on the sketch foil are, uh, are great. That's what I like about it. If you compare, this one's much more, like, zoomed in. And here you can see more of the figure. Which, I don't know why, I just really like this. You want Russian ones? I, yeah, I don't know why that's not working for you, Jace. Hold on. Let me uh, see if the Stream Decker bot left. It hasn't been doing that as much recently. Yeah, it, it just left. Anyway, you have the link there. Regular. Sketch. It also looks more artifacty like that. Vote on your thingy? I don't care. You know. You'll know. You already know. I'm voting on your thing. Which worm coil do I keep? Going to sell off the other one. Oh, I mean the original. Not close. Keep one, keep the original not close. Second of all, the uh the um hall of foil stamp is off center on your on your new one. Literally the thing that's supposed to be like uh what do I want to say, like uh forgery insurance is not in the right spot. Shodium? I have double saga. Alright, let's go. Let's see what kind of Urian deck we're against. Yeah, I, I you already covered that, Roy, so I didn't I didn't bother bringing it up. But yes, also that. Although Kaya does uh great work with desiccant packs packs as far as I understand it. I'm thinking of getting two showcase, two normal Sentinels thoughts. I mean, if that's what you want to do, go for it. I do language mismatches all the time on cards. Make just makes me happy. So 80 card Taxons. Okay. Should be able to really take them apart. Especially with the oh in the opener. I do four languages as always. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, you can split them if you want. I mean, I like them all having the same kind of frame, if that makes sense. So, like, all my bolts are FBB bolts. They all look the same, but then the language is different, which, you know, for whatever reason, I find appealing. Thalia, that's fine. Would you recommend Emrakul creativity in a meta full of Tron and Amulet? No, no, I wouldn't. You can beat Amulet. I did it three times in my challenge win, but I played real tight. I got fairly lucky. Um, you could put more Aethergust in the sideboard, but Tron is a real problem for that deck. And you can bend your sideboard more and put like some Spreading Seas in the main deck. Um, but I, if there's a ton of Tron around, I don't think I recommend emrakul creativity i think you should play if you're gonna play creativity probably play the titan build or just something that's a little bit faster of a clock 
So I can counter this. But then I'm not making a construct. On my next turn, I can make a construct or I can search. Um, because of the Arbiter. But... Mm. Counter. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do this? Am I supposed to mess with their... Yeah. I'm assuming something bad's gonna happen to this construct soon. This is nice if they have another Arbiter, I guess. My opponent's on mostly foils. I bet they have the foils for 60 card taxes, but not for the 80. Interesting. Classic taxes over there are just being really, really annoying. So I can bounce the Archon and then bounce the Thalia. That seems really good. Let's do that. Ta 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 tempo. I could tech edge my Saga next turn, but oh well, I don't have to let them do it. But I think I want to incentivize them to do it. Yeah. T -t -t tempo Squaw! Woo! That's that's a draw and a half. Let's go. I don't know, Kaya. I feel like game rule violations aren't fun for anyone. It's just it's just a bad time. Although that would really look like cheating. I didn't say anything, Kaya. I just said game rule violations aren't fun for anyone. You're very, very smart. You are one of the, the, the like, when I watch you play, I'm always like, damn, the f was that play? Mind equals melted. Is this Caldro? What? Sorry, call it. Uh, deputy of detention spheres? Yeah. That would definitely be something. I mean, I, 
I don't think feel like I need to say much about it, J.K. Torborg, but I feel like the correct response to the, your your comment there is as it should be. Ambitious farmhand. They get to search their library, right? For planes, if I have more lands than them? Wait, where's the clause? There's supposed to be a clause. What? This white card gives your opponent card advantage. What? Unacceptable! Can't believe wizards would do us like this. So dirty. So dirty. I was promised white couldn't have. I was promised white wouldn't have cards like this. Damn it. All right, so they have a Calder coming in here. So let's just go... Sentinel. Foundry. Ooh. Eh, they get another land. I'm not going to worry about it. If I attack with both constructs, if they don't have a, a solitude, they're just dead. If they have a solitude, they're going to use it anyway, right? I want Ambitious Farmhand for the next unset. Same card, but transforms into a Plains? Oh, yeah, I have a Teferi. Oh, they have a Batter Skull. Okay, wasn't expecting that. That's fine. We cleared the Germ Token. Holy crap. Good jam. Apparently this is from Pokemon Sun and Moon. This is Vast Pony Canyon. But I'm assuming the original version does not sound like this. Oh, Ambitious Farm Land. Sorry, I, it, the L and the H just ran together in my brain. Path to Exile? I mean, I guess if you're gonna be enough of a psycho to uh, to play Arbiter, you might as well play all the all the toys, huh? Yeah, they have to leave the Cauldra on defense here. Yeah, I can't put lethal into play in a way that's not really sketchy. It's a good draw. Not a great draw, but a good draw. Wait a minute. I 
I didn't have lethal already. They have a Cauldra. I turned a land into the Thopter. Oh, oh, you mean I don't need more. Yeah, 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 yeah. After I made the Thopter, it was lethal. I was just expecting the Cauldra to magically do more things. Yeah, I, I realized they were at three and I had... Yeah, I didn't even do the combat math as, as per usual. Well, maybe I do want the rebukes. Don't need the grave hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's the EE? They have a bunch of two drops. Yeah, it's probably okay. I mean, so do I. But, yeah, you're right. It's good against Thalia, clearing out just a bunch of stuff. Oh, Cult is really bad here, right? Yeah. So you probably shave a Stoneforge. Uh, they might, Roy. They also play the, um... I want the Verdict. Maybe. Yeah. They also play the, um... Skyclave Apparition, probably. I just, I want to minimize the number of, like, disastrously bad, like, mid-game top decks where it's like, oh, great, I have a Call of a Complete and nothing to do with it. And they play, like, Path and Solitude to kill the token. It's, re it's really easy for White to kill the token, right? Teferi... Uh, Teferi was really good that game. They can shave one Thopter Foundry and one on oh, the Chromatic Star. Yeah, that's probably fine. All right, land heavy. We've got two indestructible lands. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, the question here is like do i want to play into them having the arbiter or do i want to play around it they've got th like this this has ended up working really poorly obviously um i think i still should play around the arbiter Playing Thopter Foundry that turn didn't get me anywhere except for expose it to Skyclave Apparition. Noodle to hand, huh? Pretty conservative. Guess it makes sense though. I should leave up everything here, because if they put in the Arbiter and shoot down my Seacrum, I could just pay for the search, but I also have Metallic Rebuke to play here. 
They're going to put their vials to three and two, and then probably just play nothing. I guess we play the Thopter Foundry. Those decks ever play Kataki? Yeah, probably. Boy, that would be a problem, huh? They have Giver? Okay. Giver and Arbiter? Stoneforge. That could be a problem. Arbiter double strip mine, portable hole. Right. I just don't have anything to do, and I'd rather have the artifact. I'll just let it go. It's fine. Put in the cauldra, get beaten. Yeah. Altar is actually fairly protected here, too. But I'm in a good spot life wise. So you got two cards in hand. One of them is Uriah. Don't know the other one. Oh, that, they could have uh, Ghost Quartered in response to the, oh, but I'd still get a land, or I'd still get the mana I want, so. Urza. They don't have the mana to path. They could have Solitude, blue, or white card. They definitely have the white card because they have Uriah, but. Once this resolves, I'm pretty happy. So we could actually bounce the uh -oh, germ token. And if they give it protection from colorless, um, they lose the culture equipped, culture complete equipped. This is probably just what we do, right? No, because they have Uriah to flicker it right now. This is solved with the Thopter until they Uriah. If they draw a land, they can Uriah now. It's fine. It's probably fine. They're very heavily incentivized to kill this saga before it goes off, so I could not imagine them not doing it now. It'd be very weird for them to try to do it later. Yeah, this is the field. Yep. So now I'm like pinned a little bit. Like I have to bounce this this turn when they attack and then they'll just be able to reset it. But not too bad. 
Let's go ahead and spin Urza, because I can. It's free real estate, baby. It's not what I wanted, though. Oh no, they have more? Gross. Oh, okay, that's fine. Ah, we're not actually dead. We can Thopter Sword combo. We have a combo, we could still get to it. Gosh, another Flicker Wisp. Oh, but they can slide out my Urza and my Esper Sentinel for my turn. Let's see how clever they are. I have made my play, opponent. Don't do it! Don't do it! Alright. I don't know if they knew that was going to happen or not. There, there was no reason to activate the giver there. None. They name Artifact, Glox Ninja. No, they want it to flicker now. Because, see, the, the Flicker Wisps are going to put these in exile for my entire turn. So now I don't have an Urza on my turn. Oh, also they get to Portable Hole my... Sentinel. They did it during their second main phase where they should have. Oh, they also get to take out my lands. I always forget that Flicker Wisp can do that. It's so obnoxious. Wait, they didn't hit my Urza? That's weird. Weird. I feel like that was wrong, but whatever. That that is exactly what happened, uh Eljax. Alright, we missed with that anyway. Exactly what happened. Oh yeah, 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 sure, sure. Well, I, yeah, I explained it earlier when I was talking about how we were gonna have to interact with the Cauldra. Um, but if people missed that moment, then yeah, totally. All right. So I would really like a portable hole or pithing needle early. Monkey's paw curls. Got it. Well, that's not at all, Mr. Fringe. That's it, that's only possible if you believe in jinxes, which I don't. Twenty-three lands. No, I think we're going to five here. They also mold the six? All right. All right, this is...
Yeah, this is the hand, right? It's like a, there's a couple ways this could go badly. But. And obviously I'm counting on drawing something relevant, but I had to mold a five, so it's like. I don't think it's right to keep the Urza. I don't think it's right to keep the Dispatch. Yeah. So if they have hole for this, it's uh, like the most annoying because it means I can't rebuke on two. Good. Okay, that's that's huge that they didn't have portable hole there. It uh, changes the entire course of this game, basically. Back edge. That's okay. I'm not going to have that many lands for a minute. The hell? Okay. I guess I can't counter right now? Like, I, I understand that this is going to foil the... But it... Eh, I, I didn't... I don't know about that one. It's fine. Alright. Please don't miss. Brutal. Yeah. Well, we might just get taxed out of this game now. Um. I can't trade here. Oh, wait. I don't trade here. Sorry. Why did I think this was a 3 1? Yeah. Oh, it's just rough because I already had one of the few hits left in my deck in my hand, too, Sari. So if they have a flicker wisp here, this game is really, really back on their side. So it's almost there's there's a metric S ton of stuff that they could have here. That's fine. No God damn it. Yeah. Everything is awful. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. Maybe there's a play. Smash. Yeah, seems all right. <laughs> See if they have anything else. Right.
Uh oh. One more land. So they're putting me a six, which means if they hit the land for the cave, they can kill me the turn after, regardless. If they don't hit the land now, or if they hit the land now, they could put me to three. So I'm, yeah, I'm just dead, basically. So we're kind of on, uh oh. Oh, for the. All right, all right, all right, fine, whatever. We didn't die, we just lost. <laughs> yeah. I remember that movie, Mr. Fringe. That was not a great movie. Kids loved it at the time, though. It was a, it was a good, good time. So very close one there against Death and Taxes. Flicker Wisp is particularly evil. Uh, obviously not a deck we're well set up to beat, but uh, who is, really? And then the, the question is, do you need to be set up well to beat Death and Taxes, or do you just need to draw well? Uh, they were on Urian, which was relevant in most of the games, where we have no companion. So I do think Contra Ego's version of this deck is kind of just better than these ones. The 60 cards is really nice and clean, but it's just like just just play just play the companion. Just just play the dang companion. Was the black four any No, that's no, just the that's just the the draw land. The horizon land. That's all that is. It's just horizon land. They don't they don't play black cards. They just play horizon lands. Because they can absorb the life total. Volkswagen's going to be on Grix's shit. No. They're on Merktide. Okay. Shoot. Yep. Merktide. Land. Portable hole. Gah. I hate this stupid deck. Well, not even the deck. I hate that stupid card. They didn't play it? Oh, that's even worse. God, that's so much worse. And the monkey always steals your removal spell off the top. Does the needle stop treasure tokens now? No, it didn't before and it doesn't now. It didn't it didn't before and it doesn't now. No. No, stop not playing. <sighs> this is the worst. Yep. There's 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 no way through. We're just going to die to this. What? Really? Why? What cuz you think I had the land? Nah. I never had an opponent. I don't have anything. Yeah, good. Correct. You can't name tokens with needle. Also, it doesn't affect mana abilities. Well, they might have thought I was sandbagging the land. I wasn't. I just have a terrible hand. <laughs> The vow update lets you? No. No, it's specifically the opposite. No, you can't needle Black Lotus tokens, but you can needle Black Lotus and it affects the Black Lotus tokens. Yeah, so there used to be a very esoteric thing. Um, yes, there has to be a card with a specific name that was the same as a token. Well, it turned out there was a card called Blood. It was half of a split card called Flesh and Blood. Foundry is bait than Stoneforge? Yeah. Or is it better to go the other way around? Stoneforge is bait than Foundry.
think Foundry is actually pretty good in the matchup. You can name blood, but blood no doesn't affect blood tokens. Because blood tokens are now named blood token. But you were able to. You were able to before the set came out. I think I play a sword into the counter here. So before before this set came out, tokens were named what they were named. They did not have the word token associated with them. So a goblin wizard token was just called goblin wizard, which coincidentally is a card. Um, splinter tokens from the ref reflecting mirror card, I forget what it's called, um, were called splinter. And there was a time where there was uh, like a surgical extraction kill spell that could hit the Splinter token and it would try to search their library for a card named Splinter, which there was a card named Splinter. Um, I still think it didn't work because it said like, look, look for another creature card, but it might have been actual just like look for another card named. Okay, so I can probably force them to sack a bunch of treasure tokens here. That's the best we can do. Any cavern on Artificer so far? Uh, I think you're supposed to name human in this deck, actually, Da Vinci. So they only have three cards. So this turn we play Teferi as bait. Next turn we play Urza as bait. It's not even as bait, right? Like, Teferi actually theoretically forces them to counter it. I mean, they could choose not to. Correct, correct, Da Vinci. But like, I, I don't feel like I'm going to need to be have Stoneforge to be uh, uh, uncounterable. Sometimes. I mean, th yes, there are times. There's one cavern. It's like, it, it, let me. It, it's just you. You can name whatever you need to name in the given situation. So, oh, for the love of fuck. <laughs> Two cards in hand. Okay. Really? I guess I'm so low they just uh they're just trying to finish this game out. The artificer is just better. It probably is, yeah. But uh human gets uh Esper Sentinel and Urza. Yeah, I, I agree with you almost always, but it's just like the only time I've played it I had both Esper Sentinel and Urza in my hand, so I named uh I named human, and I was very pleased with it. Anyway, no. Uh, not not in a way that was relevant, at least. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I think the message happened once I was already streaming. So if they have a bolt, they can kill me here. Although they do go all in on it. So in theory, if I had one mana interaction, it would be to their detriment. Yeah. Of course. What a stupid game. <laughs> Goddamn monkey. Non-rip, graveyard hate, and creativity. No, I, I, I'm not considering that. Personally. I'm not personally considering running non-rip graveyard hate in creativity. I hate Le Leyline of the Void. I would only play Leyline of the Void in decks that couldn't play Rest in Peace. I don't mind the non-bow with Ren. In the matchups where it's good, it's just too good. And I board down one or two Ren and Sixes depending on the matchup. And you can't run artifacts, right? So you just just run the red and, rest in peace. The, the guy who made second place, um, Stephen Perlman, made second place at GP Vegas, did not play rest in peace. So 
you you don't have to but i choose to and yeah exactly well and it's like even if it's not winning it's like it means your renin like the non bow at the renin six isn't really relevant at least i don't think so like relics don't need that Uh, I have no idea, Mr. French. As far as I understand it, this deck came from the release of AFR and MH2. So, like, Verdict. Yeah, it's like Red Red and Six has removal in that matchup is like fine, just pinging stuff. It has been incredibly rare the matchup where I resolved the rest in peace, and then I had a Red and Six, and I needed the fetch land in order for the game to feel manageable. It just it just doesn't happen often. This hand is great. This hand is great. Let's go. It's just the kind of disynergy I'm I'm very much willing to accept. And in most of the matchups where you play the rest in peace, they want to remove it. So usually at some point, it's going to get removed. Yeah, yeah, Ren, Ren saves the mana base all the time. Maybe I'm supposed to cut these in some of the sideboard end games? Because we go down on artifact count. Woof. Someone's going to die. Yeah. So this is why I didn't bother leaving either of my creatures back. Yikes. Would have been really nice to have a Mystical Dispute or Metallic there. Uh-oh. That was a really good draw. Get him. Bonk. Love that Dexter's Laboratory sound effect. Also in very similar sound effect in uh, Mega Man. Another iteration. Yikes. Yikes! They're just trying to stay edgy, Jen and I. Whoa. Has anyone ever seen Murktide roll over so badly? They played two expressive iterations.
I'm just saying, Roy. I've never, I've never seen, I've never seen Merktide have like just such a like wheel, 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 one removal spell, wheel, wheel, die. They're just, they just spun around and didn't do anything. Oh man, this hit's really bad. Please tell me they took a malt. They didn't take a malt. Ah. That's so bad. Much better. Damn it. Rebuke would have been so good there. Thanks. I can't play that. I mean, I can, but then I tap off Metallic Rebuke, which is, I feel like it's not worth doing right here. Wow. How many counter spells do you think are in their hand right now? That's a really good draw. It's got to be a Merc Tide in their hand, huh? So we'll try to counter it when they play it, and then we'll have the verdict. Yeah, feels pretty good. Uh, so tempting. I can't, though. I mean, I could, but I think it's better not to. Well, I think they're playing a Merc Tide this turn. Maybe, maybe, just a hunch. Do it. Do it. Yep. Oh no. Well, I mean, they can't actually counter into fairy here. Do I bounce this? I think so. Yeah. This may tr prove to be a mistake, but I feel like getting the tempo blow out there and I still have the verdict. I guess they could have like Dash Monkey or something, or just Bolt or whatever. Uh oh. El Sculptor? Yikes. Wasn't expecting that one. Well, that's trouble. Yep. Good lord. What a nice draw. And now. They're probably going to have the, um, dress down. Damn it, Merktide, why do you have to be so good? What the hell? Come on. 
What? They have a second one, right? But I mean... I'm not playing around it. I'm going to need all the J's, but... Oh, or maybe... No, we need all the J's, 100%. Dress down, baby! There's literally no way they don't have it. Nope. What? What? Did they screw... Uh... Okay. You got me. But like, still. So weird. That's fine. I mean, well played so far, but like, I don't know. I can't tell if I've been outplayed or they just like have a hand that just doesn't care about anything that I'm doing. All aboard the fail boat? Yeah, I guess so. I'm gonna see if I can bait out a second Merc Tide. I'm at 27. I got a lot of time. And this being uncounterable basically means like. I just don't see any reason not to. Try to get some more out of this situation. Yeah. The two uh, Horizon lands on their side are definitely concerning. They didn't attack? What, on purpose? Serum Vision, okay. What? Why would you not attack? What are they worried about? So this percentile is kind of kind of thick. The big boy, large lad. Looks like they click through attack. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they're playing really fast, but like they just don't need to be playing this fast. This this is too fast. You're playing too fast, opponent. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Chromatic Star Manamorphose bolt the DRC dash monkey. That's see now now it's oh yeah it's all coming together. Attack first, lol. I might as well, right? I really wish I had a little bit more time, but now I kind of have to verdict. We have knocked out a lot of their threats, though. Once, once we resolve this verdict. You got me. I was bluffing. No, they found another Merc Tide. Rude. Jesus. Alright. Metallic Rebuke off the top one time. Or Mystical Dispute. We have both. I got like five counters in my deck right now. Yeah. Merc Tide's one rude, dude. They're Well, they gotta counter that. They saw this, right?
Yeah. They have to save the counter. Really? I think that's a mistake. But I suppose... Kind of rocking a hard place. I guess they could just have an EE on two, right? Right now? But... Thunder Squad! Assemble! Nope. They're digging. Ooh, he, he's, he's trying! Ooh, ooh, hooey! So they need a lawn, Jace, the Mind Sculptor. They found the EE. Well, that's really annoying. It's not it's not actually that bad though. It's bad, obviously bad, but it's not that bad. So we sack the sword. I right, bring it back cuz it's going to die anyway. But I do want the sword in my graveyard, because now if I play Esper Sentinel, it goes snap on. They're attacking. That's bold. They have a DRC? They have to have a DRC, right? Yeah. Fuck. Uh, being really annoying. This game is stupid. It's kind of sick that it's gone on this deep. Is this literally their last Merc Tide? One, two, no, they have one more. Damn it. Stop it. Uh, I don't get to play 18 lands like you, opponent, and I don't get to have two of them that are Horizon land. Uh, Mystical Pot, thanks for the follow. <laughs> this is so annoying. Such a such a crappy way to lose. It's just one of those classic things. It's like this the the real the real demonstration here is like. This is why Urza decks tend to be bad. We have to actually play enough lands to support um, the four mana spell. And they just get so much free equity because they don't have it. Like, they don't have to do things like that. They just get to play a really cheap, low to the ground everything. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, who draws better in this case is heavily stilted, right? It's not an even fight, right? At all. Because they, they just have a higher density of slightly better cards, I would say, overall. Some of our cards have a, a higher ceiling, but overall I think their um their their deck is just a little bit stacked better. It was very unlikely that I don't find anything. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Well, I mean, they 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 uh played the expressive iteration to find that last engineered explosives that that got the game to this spot. Mill out opponent? No, they're gonna kill me this turn. I'm pretty sure. There's any piece of removal kills me. Um, there's a few things that don't, but. Most things kill me here. Like. Dress down does not kill me here. In fact, dress down means I won't die. Yeah. Although, what they do here is they attack. And uh, depending on how I block, they play the dress down and it does kill me. So I block like this, and then they... Oh no, then they can't play the dress down. This is the way to block so they can't play the dress down. Interesting. 
I'm at one. Bolt. Interesting. Are they just doing this to scry? Or did they find the bolt? Because they went no no mill, no mill. What is happening? Well, I was that that's where I was blocking anyway, Roy. Okay, let's try to get my sword of the meek back. Okay. And then we die. Cool. Yeah. Throughout the whole latter half of the game, the problem there was they had like four or five cards in hand almost the whole time, and uh, no one card that I drew could help me. And the pressure was high enough that I couldn't uh, couldn't hope to uh, get through that. Yeah. So that was a that was a really good league. I mean, I know we ended up three two, but we put up a really good fight in both the matches we lost against taxes and. Uh, Merktide. Did we play every single game of that league? I believe we did. Yeah. Every single game in that league. Um, deck's fine. I don't like Ashiok much for any of anything right now. I don't think that card makes a lot of sense. Um, I assume Condemn is here as a dispatch that you're like 100% sure is going to be on. Uh, I mean, that's a choice. The 61 card main deck can almost definitely just be be straight 60. Oh, that's cool, Mr. Fringe. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of ability to customize, but the core, the core here felt really good. I don't know that I like the Talismans of Progress so much. Um, they were pretty good in some spots, though. They're really good with Portable Hole and Esper Sentinel in your deck. And this number of one drops. These are just a hard... These decks are a bit of a hard sell, for, uh, as I was just saying, against Murktide, because you have some powerful synergies going on, but it's like, you're a worse blue deck than Murktide, most likely, and you're a worse white deck than Hammer Time, like, in terms of, like, using these artifacty cards. Um... Definitely five zero with it, but uh, and and we put up a really good uh, put up a really good fight in that league. But uh, but it's just like the 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 absolute top tier decks just have a little bit more a little bit more edge on you. So definitely a fun deck that I like a lot, uh, but not not quite super competitive. That said, I feel like you solve a lot of problems by going up to eighty cards. Because you get a little bit more power out of some of these things. You get to do some of the things that, like, Murktide's not as good at doing. Um, and, like, you have three Urzas and you have three Thopter Foundries. Play four Urzas. Play four Thopter Foundries and 80 cards. And all of a sudden, you may found, find the deck in a better balance. Then there's room for things like Solitude as um, Da Vinci's been playing. Uh, the deck that I went 4-3 in the challenge yesterday. Which really could have quite easily been a 5-2. Um it had some other things broken our way. Um, of course, obviously, things could have broken the other way and gone three four. But uh, um, and some of the versions of this these decks that I've been playing with uh, eighty cards with uh, things like uh, the Dollhouse of Horrors and the Paradox Engine and all sorts of nonsense like that. Anyway, if you're in the future watching this on the YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, check out any of my other videos you're interested in. I will see you there.